Welcome to Black Brilliance on the B-Side. My name is Andrew Weaver, and I'm your host. Thank you guys for joining me today. So we're going to discuss a Black Brilliance sister by the name of Dorothy Johnson. Now, her married name is Dorothy Vaughn. Now, Dorothy Johnson was born on September 20th, 1910 in Kansas City, Missouri. Now, at that time, the, the hit song on the airways was St. Louis Blues by W.C. Handy. So she would later go on to graduate from Beechhurst High School in 1925. She was only 14 years old. This lets you know how bright she was. In 1925, Ma Rainey was on the radio. She was one of the most popular blues singers back in the day. And that song was C.C. Ryder Blues. Dorothy Vaughn won a full scholarship at the historically black college Wilberforce University. It was here she studied for her B.A. in mathematics and graduated in 1929. She was 18 years old, graduating from college, not high school. At that time, in 1929, Fats Waller was on the radio was the hit song, Ain't Misbehaving. Now, after graduation, Dorothy was encouraged by her professors at Wilberforce to pursue graduate study at Howard University. She refused and began working as a teacher at Robert Rusa Moton High School in Farmville. Her decision was influenced by the poor economic conditions of the Great Depression, so she felt an obligation to help her family through those tough times. Now, during this time, she met and married Howard Vaughn Jr., hence Dorothy Vaughn, in 1932. She was only 21 years old. In 1932, Louis Armstrong was playing All of Me as a hit song in that era. So we get a feel for what it was like during that time. Dorothy Vaughn would join the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. The acronym for that was NACA. Her new position at NACA's Langley Memorial Aeronautic Laboratory was only meant to be temporary. She was still a teacher at the time, but she decided to fully commit and quit as a teacher and went full time. Little did she know that this would begin a 28-year journey. Here she worked as a human computer. Now, they made calculations for individuals or teams of engineers. Vaughn's career would flourish despite the segregation conditions and was promoted to acting head of the West Area Computers in 1949. Now, this was to replace her predecessor, who had recently died. Now, in 1949, Louis Jordan and his Timpany Five were playing the hit song, Saturday Night Fish Fry. This made her Naka's first ever black supervisor, not to mention one of his earlier female supervisors. She would now lead a team of mainly black women mathematicians. Dorothy's new title immediately gave her laboratory-wide visibility. She would also begin to collaborate with other well-known computers like Vera Huckle and Sarah Bullock. This work would involve compiling a handbook of algebraic methods for calculating machines. Dorothy Vaughn would become a strong advocate for her team members. She would even go as far as intervening personally when colleagues deserved promotions or pay raises. She would quickly become respected by NACA engineers who valued her input and recommendations. They would consider her one of the best and happily ask her to handle the more challenging task personally. While at NACA, IBM was gradually growing in popularity. The first IBM computer used in the space program was the IBM car programmed calculator. It was used at first to help develop missiles and rack the Soviet Union's progress with Sputnik. Programmers could only interact with the IBM by using a revolutionary program language called Fortran. Two words put together, which is formula and translation. Dorothy Vaughn quickly realized that machine computers would replace human ones in the not so distant future. So she took it upon herself to learn Fortran and taught her colleagues the computing language and the concepts to prepare them for the transition. She could have easily have done this just for herself for job security, but she thought about her women that she worked with, how they would actually fare in this transition. She wanted them and their families to take advantage of it as well. That shows that she cared about people other than herself, right? It was people over profit. Wonderful, wonderful idea. Even back then, that was something that was kind of revolutionary. You didn't see it happen with a lot of people. But with her, it was just an amazing thing that within this access, she thought about others instead of competing with them. By learning Fortran and becoming computer programmers, her and her team made many significant contributions to the U.S. space program. Their work would ultimately help John Glenn get into orbit in 1962. We start to see that 
opportunity created brilliance within them. It's a lot of what we we kind of struggle with in society is that we say that, you know, black people don't do this. They don't do that. They're lazy. They get stuff for free, blah, 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 blah. Right. And then you start to realize, give us opportunity and we shine. But put us in a situation where opportunity is null and void and we fail. And then you're like, what, you're not trying? These people got the opportunity and they were shining bright. NACA would soon evolve in 1958 into NASA. And NASA stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Now in 1958, the hit song Twilight Time by the Platters was playing over the airwaves. Dorothy and her team would also contribute significantly to the Scout Launch Vehicle Program. Scout is an acronym. It stands for Solid Controlled Orbital Utility Test. Scout was a four-stage solid fuel satellite delivery system that was able to launch a 385-pound satellite into a 500-mile orbit of the Earth. These launches included the successful delivery of no less than 23 satellites of international space organizations. In a later 1994 interview, Dorothy would recall of this time as being on the cutting edge of something very exciting. She also responded to being asked what it would be like as a black woman at that time. She replied, I changed what I could and what I couldn't, I endured. Dorothy Vaughn would continue to work with NASA until 1971 at the age of 60. Now in 1971, Al Green was on the radio and the hit song was Let's Stay Together. Now incredibly, despite her illustrious career at Langley, she managed to find the time to raise six children. One of them will actually join her at NASA's Langley facility. She was a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, the Black African American sorority. Dorothy was an active member of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. She would often be seen participating in musical and missionary activities. She even wrote a song called Math Math. Throughout this period, she lived in Newport News, Virginia, and commuted to work at Hampton via public transportation. Dorothy would live for another 38 years after her retirement, and she passed away on November 10th, 2008. In 2008, when she passed away, the hit song Take a Bow by Rihanna played the airwaves. Dorothy Vaughn, thank you, sister, for your contributions. A lot of times we don't know about our brothers and sisters who have done brilliant things. And sometimes we know, but just a little, or you may have a movie made about you that doesn't really tap into who you really were or not too much in depth of what you actually accomplished. Uh, and it's so much to do within two hours. I enjoyed the movie about your life and uh, thank you for your contributions. Black people in our community are not always respected for what they've done. A lot of times they're forgotten if they're not on the A side, meaning like everybody knows about you because it's something that's always played during, you know, Black History Month in February. Now, growing up, I knew nothing about you. So now you're more prevalent. But prior to that, we did not know about you. And I am apologetic to that as a 50 year old man who just now found out about you in 2018, I think, because I didn't watch the movie in 2016. So I'm very thankful that I got an opportunity to be able to learn about your life and the contributions that you had, uh, not only to black America, but to America as a whole. Uh, if not for you and women like you, we would not be where we are today. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know you're learning from her through the movie, through what we're talking about, but I really implore you to actually go a little bit deeper than what I've given you. Check her life out and start to see some of the great, wonderful things that she did and knowing really that there were things that she was going up against. And during the, the 20s and she was born in 1910. So, you know, she was going through a lot of racial uh, segregation and just just evil things. And even in the midst of that, she was showing her brilliance. People understood the value that she possessed. But think about it. Not everybody had that opportunity to do what she did, and she used it to the best of her ability. She not only did for herself, she gave back to her community. She gave back to the women that she worked for. She was in a leadership position for a reason. This woman actually helped lead her people at work and even at home and after that in her church. So you can't 
give anything but credit to this woman for all the wonderful and brilliant things that she did. And I thank you once again and your family for being able to uh, provide our country, our world with the likeness of you. Your legacy will never be forgotten. I thank you for your contributions and I thank you for just being you, a wonderful, brilliant black sister that used herself to the fullest of her abilities. You guys can reach me by info at blackbrainsonthebside.com. You can also check out all my social media, the YouTube, the TikTok, all of those things which are on my sites, blackbrainsonthebside.com. And also with my business, Black Dollar Fund, which is all about lifting and creating opportunities for black communities uh, by investing in them and giving them the opportunity to be great. That's one thing that we've missed in the black community is people actually looking at us as an opportunity to bring out our greatness, to bring out our brilliance. And believe me, the people that I present to you are usually the brilliant people of the past. We have brilliant people right now who are just not getting the opportunities in all of these communities. And Black Dollar Fund wants to tap into that and transform America. Let them keep the uh, lion's share of what they create. Because our brilliance, if you start to look at history, if we kept the patents, if we had ownership of our brilliance, we would be massively wealthy in this country. Wealth would not be an issue big time for black America. But because everything was pretty much stolen or paid cheaply, we still suffer that particular issue. So let's transform that. So now that we talked about Dorothy Vaughn, tune in next time when we talk about another black brilliant person in America that may have been forgotten or on the B side. Thank you guys very much for your time. Much love and respect to all of you. I can't wait to bring another black brilliant person into your mind, into your hearts, into your soul. Now do me a favor. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and hit that bell so that you can be able to get notifications every time we launch a new video about black brilliant people of America. Until next time, take care.